Today's Ask Me Anything is brought to you by our friends at True Panion Medical Insurance for Pets, which incidentally is the insurance I use for my dogs. Question goes out to Elaine, who says, I love your videos and share them on Facebook. Well, thank you for that, Elaine. That's very kind of you. Any tips on how to stop my dog, a 90 pound shepherd, from acting like he wants to eat the mailman? My dog knows specific trucks, UPS, FedEx, Amazon, and the mailman, even when they're just driving by. I'm pretty sure he can't read. You might be wrong. What's happening with, with the situation is any kind of delivery driver, there's a theory I used to talk about called the postman theory. And what that means is the dog understands that there's somebody coming to the door, they bark and the person goes away. So it's a game the dog is kind of forming. And usually you're not there to reinforce it one way or the other. So the way it's reinforced is by the dog barking, the person going away. The dog sees somebody coming up, hears somebody up, coming up, smells somebody coming up and does an action, they bark. That action, makes the person go away. But it doesn't really make the person go away because the dog, the person is going away anyway. The dog is barking, barking, barking. The person does their job, delivers the package, and then turns around and walks away. But in the dog's mind, he's learning that he's making the person go away. So easy exercises to do are when the dog barks, tell the dog, hey, go to your place, lie down, put him on a place command. If you're not home, I would put the dog in an area of the house where he can't really trigger off of that, where he can't really see that or hear that, and that'll make the dog a little bit calmer. It's really important for the dog to be a little bit more neutral because if he's gonna keep barking and barking and barking at the, at the mailman, eventually the, the, the frustration could be dangerous because he might bite somebody because the person's not going to leave when they go away. Look up my videos on, on, the, on the postman theory. It's on, uh, on YouTube and you'll see that it can be something that can be problematic later. So just teach your dog, hey, good job, good barking, I'll lie down, just sit still and chill out. The dog will learn that's a better way to be. And teaching your dog a place command, an out command, a down command, or basically just a command where the dog knows just chill out makes everything okay. Dog must understand that when you tell him to calm down, he should really calm down and that will help you a lot. Question goes out to Hayden, who says, love your videos. When you say to train three times for five to 10 minutes, would that include exercise as well? Like if we were going for a run for 10 to 20 minutes? And the answer to that, Hayden, is no. Exercise is one thing, training is another thing. Exercise is something we do for the dog to give them a release of energy, a reward for doing the right thing, and also just a bonding exercise between us and the dog. Training is bonding as well, but it's quite different because we want to really get the dog's attention, we want to get the dog focused. So what I suggest you do, your three training sessions a day, let's say you're gonna do three, even if you only did two, should be focused on what you want the dog to learn. So you take the dog out of the crate or out of the house, into the yard, into the training area, to the park, wherever you're doing that. Get the dog engaged to you. Get the dog to, to want to play with you, to want to focus on you. Then get the dog to do the exercises that are on your list to do for that day. Now that doesn't have to be a written list, that can just be a mental list. Today we're going to work on recall and we're going to work on our sit exercises. Once we do that, we reward the dog during the exercises. We abundantly reward the dog after the exercise, after the training is complete. And at that point we do something called the jackpot. We give them a lot of treats, we play with them a little extra longer, we throw a frisbee or a ball or whatever that might be, and then we can do exercise with the dog. But what I would suggest you do before you do that exercise is give the dog five or 10 minutes in a crate or just sitting down to kind of think about what you did, to think about the obedience exercises because the dog will digest it better in a calm state of mind. Once the dog is calm, then take the dog out and do your training, or sorry, do your exercises as far as um, running or, or playing or walking or whatever else you want to do. But remember, differentiate. There's a time for obedience and there's a time for play. Later on, you can mix those two together and start doing obedience in your, in your um, exercise and in your walking and all that stuff. But right now, keep it separate. Make sure the walks are for sniffing and for having fun and letting the dog be a little bit more free. Training is about structure and obedience. It'll make your dog a lot happier and it'll make you a lot happier too. The question goes out to Margaret, who says, been using your training with my brother's five-month-old mixed breed small dog. He loves to play tug. So I have used that and taught him to sit, out, fetch, and leave it. By the way, Margaret, that's amazing for a five-month-old dog, if, if you're telling me the truth. You might be fibbing it a little bit, but if you're telling me the truth, that's amazing. He is a very quick learner and catches on fast. My issue now is when walking, he wants to tug on the leash. There is the hiccup. 
I have stopped and waited for him to stop pulling and drop it, but he comes back and tries to grab it closer to my hand and is jumping up and grabbing on clothing. I know it's an attention issue. I am so as to I am so bl as to how to stop it. I'm saying I think you're so unsure how to stop it or what correction should be applied. Thank you for any direction. Love your methods and videos. So part of the equation is that it's a puppy and a puppy is engaging you to play. The puppy wants to play. The puppy wants to engage and the puppy wants to play when he shouldn't play. So we need to teach the dog that there's a time to play and a time not to play. Now, the more you engage the dog or you reprimand the dog for doing the, the, the tugging on the leash, the more engagement you're giving the dog. So you're kind of giving the dog a signal like you're playing with him, but not in the way he wants to play. So he'll continue to play until he gets the play he wants. The easiest thing to do is to get the dog to just, to just ignore the dog. That's the first easy thing to do. And your stillness will still, still in the dog, still in. I'm not sure if still in is a word, but if it is, you will still in the dog. Um, the more you yell at the dog or try to correct the dog or yank the leash out of the puppy's mouth or do anything like that, the more you're actually engaging the, the exercise. You're engaging the dog to continue to want to do the exercise and play with you. So take the dog out. What I would do is use two leashes. When he picks one up, grab the other one, start walking with him. When he picks, grabs that one, pick the other one back up. Just don't make a big issue out of it because you're teaching the dog to tug, which is a good thing. I'd be careful at the five month window with teething and everything like that. But get the dog to understand that there's a time to play and a time not to play. And no matter how hard he wants to play, don't play. That means don't, don't yank on the leash because that's the easiest thing. First thing we're going to try to do as soon as the dog grabs the leash, we're going to grab the leash and say, hey, knock it off. And that tugging is exactly what the dog is going for. It's a very, very common issue. Part of it is a maturity issue because it's only a five month old puppy. Part of it is that the dog is trying to engage you and being very, um, very smart in learning how to make the game start and how to engage the game. So you've got to outthink the five month old puppy, which you should be able to do pretty easily. Just stop, don't engage the dog. Just sit there, wait, check your text messages and then take off again. And that'll be the best way to do it. The question goes out to Sarah who asks, older dog doesn't correct puppy at all. He avoids puppy constantly. Should we be worried? We ensure he has separate timeout, lots of one-on-one -on -one play and cuddles. So uh, some dogs won't correct a puppy because they'll put up with the behavior because they're just really good sports about it. And at some point they may correct the puppy. What I would do in the interest of your older dog, you always want to look out for the interest of your older dog, is draw some boundaries. Let them play. When you see the play and the excitement getting a little bit too high, then take the puppy away and put him in a crate, give him something to chew on a bone, a Kong or something like that. And then give your older dog a bunch of love, take him for a walk, give him some treats and let him know that you appreciate him being a good sport. You don't want to let a puppy overwhelm the older dog because then the pressure will get too much. And even if the dog is kind of taking it, at some point they might snap and it might just scare the puppy. More than likely your dog is just a really good sport, which is a great dog to have, especially when you get a new puppy. But structure it. Give them a certain amount of playtime. Give them a certain amount of um, obedience exercises to call the puppy off and use the older dog as a distraction. Always remember the puppy should see the older dog as coming first. The older dog gets fed first, gets walked first, gets attention first, gets affection first, gets um, treats first. Everything goes first to the older dog so that the structure of your relationship in your home or your pack, whatever you want to call it, is always going to be nice and fair and balanced. And the puppy will need that and the older dog will certainly appreciate that. Be sure to take care of your puppy. Give your puppy lots of training. Give your older dog lots of love and you'll have a great and happy life. Got a question? Ask me anything. Also, if you want to learn more about True Panion Medical Insurance for Pets, check the link in the description below.